life can move pretty quickly, which is why it's important to stop and smell the roses every now and again. But don't smell this flower unless you want a nose full of poison. Let's take a look at 15 of the most rare and unusual flower species. Number 15, Chocolate Cosmos. Kicking things off is an extra sweet flower, the Chocolate Cosmos. This flower can be characterized by its reddish brown petals that can be so dark that they almost look black. But when you get in nice and close and take a whiff, it smells just like chocolate. That's pretty cool. The scent is so sweet that it's a personal favorite of butterflies. So if you do somehow come across this rare flower, you'll get a double dose of beauty. This species is native to Mexico, and because of the scent and color, the chocolate cosmos is an incredibly popular domestic plant but many have claimed that it's gone extinct in the wild. The chocolate cosmos needs to be watered once a week and thrives when it's given about six hours of direct sunlight a day. But perhaps the most unique attribute of this flower is that its seeds are sterile, so it reproduces through its roots. Number 14, Bee Orchid. Take a wild guess as to how this funky little flower got its name. The Ophrys epifera, or the bee orchid gets its name from its resemblance to a smiling bumblebee. That is, if bees could actually smile. Its scientific name comes from the Greek word ophrys, which means eyebrow, referring to the bits of fuzz growing around the edges of the flower. The bee orchid grows throughout Europe and the Middle East and North Africa, but it's become more and more scarce in recent years. The propagation process for this flower is so complicated that it's basically having trouble reproducing at a fast enough rate. But why is this? The bee orchid relies on a symbiotic relationship with specific fungus to successfully grow, which also makes transplanting the bee orchid exceptionally difficult. So couple that with the fact that they often lose to other taller flowers when competing for sunlight, and you're looking at a flower that's getting harder and harder to find. Number 13, Swaddled Babies. If you think newborn babies are cute, then you're gonna love this flower. The Swaddled Baby is the well-earned nickname for the Tulip Orchid, which was discovered in the Colombian Andes way back in the day between 1777 and 1788. But during certain times of their blooming stage, the flower takes on a pretty unique shape that looks just like a baby all wrapped in white swaddling. They look like babies, are as smooth as a baby, and probably smell just as sweet too, because insects love these things. The scent is also part of the orchid's trap because when the insect gets close enough, the lower hinge lip of the petal essentially pulls them in where they're absolutely dusted with pollen. It's almost as if this unsuspecting insect becomes a swaddled baby. But this tactic is meant to increase pollination because when the insect is finally free, they're now flying around with more pollen than usual all over their abdomen, almost as if they were with child. Number 12, Holy Ghost Orchid. The national flower of Panama, the dove or holy ghost orchid, creates a very delicate white flower that when you get up close and personal with it, resembles a small dove with open wings perched inside. It looks so convincing that you may think it's a tiny sculpture, but nature operates in strange ways sometimes. But then why the name holy ghost? Well, it turns out that in the Bible, holy ghost took on the form of a dove. But looks aside, the Holy Ghost Orchid differentiates itself from other orchid species because unlike its cousins who like to grow near trees, the Holy Ghost is found on ground level and even sometimes on rocks. And as you can imagine, this orchid is so highly sought after that it's become overpicked and is now classified as an endangered species in its home country of Panama. So while you may be tempted to nab one of these in the wild, it's best to remember that you could be picking the last Holy Ghost Orchid, making it, well, a ghost. Number 11, Protea Pinwheel. As the name would suggest, the Protea Pinwheel is the perfect addition to any front lawn. Also known as the Catherine Wheel Pincushion, the Protea Pinwheel is without a doubt one of the most beautiful of its species, and it's pretty hard to miss. This flower has a hairless inverted lance shape and the distinct stalks that angle towards the lip, and then emerging from the center is the orange or magenta head that whirls just like a pinwheel or a pincushion that blooms between September and December in its home of South Africa. But looks aside, what makes these flowers so awesome is that they've adapted perfectly to the harsh, hot climates, and the best time for them to bloom is right after a fire, because everything that would impede their growth, including rodents, has burnt away. 
The protea pinwheel can propagate by producing small fruit that's collected and eaten by ants who leave seeds behind. These seeds lie dormant underground until, you guessed it, there's another brush fire, which is their cue to begin germination. There's no denying that the protea pinwheel is pretty to look at, but they're also considered an endangered species due to an increase in water extraction. Number 10. Jade Vine also known as emerald creepers, the jade vine is an amazing species known for its exotic blue and green flowers in the shape of claws that hang down from branches like a cluster of grapes. The jade vine is endemic to the forests of the Philippines and is a surprisingly close relative to the kidney bean. This amazing species can typically be found growing beside streams, but propagation is incredibly difficult. While bats have become one of the jade vine's biggest pollinators, many of their other natural pollinators are quickly dying because of massive deforestation. So few pollinators mean fewer jade vines, and this flower is now not only incredibly rare in the wild, but also endangered. The jade vine is included in a handful of botanical gardens around the world, but it's also been cultivated in many people's home gardens, so hopefully this flower gets a second chance in the coming years. Number 9. Black Bat Flowers Taca chantrieri, or the Black Bat Flower, is an unusual-looking plant that certainly lives up to its name. That's because the flower looks just like the face of a bat. The plant also grows black flowers, which is quite uncommon, that can grow up to a foot across and are surrounded by what looks like whiskers that can grow to over two feet long as well. So if you come across the Black Bat Flower in the wild, you may get a little spooked at first glance but surrounding the dark bat-like flower are bright emerald green leaves that can grow to be four feet tall, and the entirety of the black bat flower will maintain their unconventional beauty throughout the fall. And much like the bats of its namesake, the black bat flower thrives in the shade because they're an orchid. And if you don't want to grow one of these dark orchids in your home, then get ready to put in the work because it can be a little tough. As we said, they're gonna need a lot of shade as well as well-drained soil and moderate watering planted in nutrient-rich soil. Make sure to keep out of the wind, because the wind will tatter, tear, and make quick work of the black bat flower's beautiful leaves. Number 8. Starfish Flower Despite looking so great, the starfish flower is a carrion plant, making it mimic the smell of dead and decaying flesh, so it's best not to get too close to it. When the buds finally open up and the flower shows itself, it lets out its trademark stench, but don't be alarmed. Despite the smell of death, this means that the starfish flower is healthy and ready to pollinate. The smell of death is meant to draw in insects, so if you do have one of these, it's best to let it grow outside. And to make matters worse, this flower species is native to South Africa, so they require a warm and humid environment, which isn't going to help that smell go away. But there's no denying that this plant looks amazing with its red and brown five-pointed star. Number 7. Devil's Hand the next plant on our list goes by a few names, each one creepier than last. It's been called the Mexican hand tree, hand flower, and the monkey's paw, but it's most commonly known as the devil's hand. And that's probably because the distinctive red flowers look just like an open human hand. Even the scientific name, Chiranthodendron pentadactylon, means five-fingered hand flower tree. But the Devil's Hand has a pretty cool history, and was revered by the Aztecs who cultivated it for its medicinal properties. It's said that they used the Devil's Hand as a remedy for everyday ailments like abdominal pain, heart problems, and even as a diuretic. These days, though, the Devil's Hand is just appreciated for its strange beauty. This tree likes to grow on the west slopes of Mexico and Guatemala and can reach up to 90 feet in height, but their unique look has garnered attention from cultivators in North America who have brought it to the cooler climates. This flower doesn't look like this year-round, though, and the flowers only appear in late spring and early summer. Number 6. Desert Pea In Australia, there's no shortage of one-of-a-kind wildlife that seems like its only mission in life is to kill you. Luckily, though, the next entry on our list is not one of those. Swainsona formosa was named after the English botanist Isaac Swainson, but is now more commonly known simply as the Desert Pea. The desert pea is known for its distinct blood-red flowers that look like leaves, each equipped with its own bulbous black center or boss. It's kind of a creepy-looking plant, but sometimes the creepiest plants are the coolest, and the desert pea is probably the most well-known flower on the continent. 
They've adapted to the arid climates of Australia, and the desert pea seeds have a hard seed coat to protect them from the heat until the next rainfall. So while they are resilient, the catch is that these hard seed coats inhibit germination in the wild. So unless someone is coming by to nick the coats open to help propagate these flowers, they are propagating at a very low rate. But just because the desert pea is so popular doesn't mean that you can't just go ahead and start picking them for a unique bouquet. While this isn't an endangered species, they are protected and it's illegal to pick any specimens without a permit. Number 5. Western Underground Orchid The Western Underground Orchid is definitely one of the stranger plants out there, and not just because of its distinct look. Discovered in 1928 in Western Australia, this species of orchid spends its entire life living underground. So then that begs the obvious question, if the flower doesn't get any sunlight, how could it possibly survive? Well, the Western underground orchid gets its energy and nutrients from the other fungus that live underground, and its favorite is the broom honey myrtle. And these two certainly have a strange symbiotic relationship. But can an underground orchid actually bloom? That's another fair question, and the answer is a resounding yes. The underground orchid does flower, although again completely underground, unless it's dug up by a human or maybe an animal passing by. These orchids prefer to stay down there with their root systems, but good luck ever seeing one of these underground orchids in the wild, because aside from living underground, there are only about 50 of these plants that we know of in existence, and they're all in Australia. Number 4. Mead's Milkweed Mead's Milkweed is an incredible plant that unfortunately, once it blooms, doesn't last very long. Once each year, Mead's milkweed produces one single stem with stalks of pale green flowers that nod and bob in the wind. But monarch butterflies find these blooms too sweet to resist, so they make their home here, hanging on and dangling upside down from the blossom to get a sip of that sweet, sweet nectar, while the caterpillars feed on the flowers and leaves. It's safe to say that the Mead's milkweed serves only one purpose, and that's to be feasted on by insects. And while that notion may be a little sad, remember that they help these caterpillars turn into beautiful butterflies. This plant and its flowers were once widespread across the Midwest United States, but now their numbers are few and far between, because so many of their prairie habitats have been destroyed. And the plants that are still here have a long road ahead of them, because they still face plenty of threats to their existence from urbanization, agriculture, herbicides, and even invasive species. Number 3. Alabama Canebrake Pitcher Plant Pitcher plants look and sound nice enough. The water gathers in them during heavy rainfall and monkeys have been seen drinking from them on a hot day. But then again, this bizarre plant also has a taste for flesh, and even half-digested rats have also been found inside of them. So if you ever find yourself on its home turf of Sumatra, the Philippines, or Borneo, maybe don't get too close to them. So far, there are about 150 known species of them, so good luck identifying them all. The pitcher plant will eat just about anything that manages to fly inside of its pouch, which is coated in a sticky sap to make sure that once you're in, you're not getting out. They like worms, termites, spiders, and even lizards, but the smaller insects seem to be its preferred meal of choice. Each individual species of pitcher plant have their own complex relationships with the ecosystems that they live in. One has evolved to host a colony of carpenter ants that clean off the carcasses of the plant's larger prey, which, if left unchecked, would be bad news for their pitcher plant. But then again, some species of pitcher plant have evolved to become the toilets of small shrews by providing them with a special sweet exudate. But the plants actually use the shrew poo as a source of nitrogen. It is a weird relationship, but there's one species in particular, the Alabama canebrake, that's close to extinction. The Alabama canebrake is a rare subspecies that only grows in the hillside seepage bogs and bottomland stream sides in Alabama. In fact, there are only about a dozen sites in Alabama where they grow now. Sadly, these sites have been the playground for plant collectors who didn't really think about the consequences of their actions at the time. Poaching and picking of the Alabama canebrake is so bad that the local conservationists no longer disclose the plant's locations. Number 2. Rafflesia the penultimate entry on our list is a real stinker, literally. And this one may just be the best looking so far. The Rafflesia originates in Indonesia and is unique in that it's the largest single flower in the world. 
but it has no stems, no leaves, and no roots. It just kind of is. Some people think it may be related to fungi, but you can't deny what it looks like. Like some of their cousins, the Rafflesia is extremely hard to find in the wild. When the Rafflesia first starts its life cycle, it exists as a small and inconspicuous parasitic tissue on vines in the Indonesian rainforests. But eventually they'll develop a tiny bud, and over a few days will grow exponentially to become the world-famous stinky plant. The hole in the center is so big that you could probably fit your entire head in there, but we don't recommend anyone do that. Number 1. Corpse Flower Okay, so one last carrion flower. The corpse flower smells allegedly just like a rotting corpse and looks like it came to our forests from outer space. Plus, this thing is huge, and despite the stench, you have to admit it looks amazing. If it didn't smell so bad, maybe we'd be willing to have a few around the house. But all kidding aside, the corpse flower is also really cool, because it uses that rotting flesh smell to ward off predators and prevent it from being eaten. But despite the crafty defense mechanism, the plant is still a rare one and is a threatened species. They originate from the Sumatran forests, and to many people's surprise, it's made up of thousands and thousands of tiny male and female flowers, instead of just being one single flower. The flowers exude oil, while the large spire in the center collects heat, and so it's the hot oil that creates that fresh dead body smell, which somehow manages to attract beetles to pollinate it. And since these plants are huge, a mature adult can easily weigh up to 200 pounds. Watch our nature playlist for more top 15 videos about beautiful nature. Sit back, relax, and binge watch all of our best nature videos.